What's up y'all, Solomon here. I hope you're having a good day. Today's video, we're continuing our series on the Czech Pierce defense. In my opinion, one of the most underrated chess opening options for black in the entire game. And a big, a big reason for that. I mean, first off, it's sound. Okay, it, it can be played at all levels, including the Grandmaster level. It's easy to play with its concepts and ideas, but it's also rare, right? And if you play something that's a little bit more rare, you're going to have the advantage in prep and the advantage of understanding a type of position. Okay, now openings like the French defense, Scandinavian, Carl Constantinian, those are all great. I went over those on this channel. But with all those openings, the E4 player, as an example, is, is pretty prepared, right? I mean, you hear people going, I'm trying to find a response against the Carl Kahn. I've tried this, I've tried that. The Sicilian, I'm playing this or that. The Scandinavian, you, you never really hear people saying, you know, against the hippopotamus defense, I'm really trying to figure out which one of these I like. Or against the Czech Peerts, I'm, you just don't hear that that much. Right. In fact, I don't think I've ever heard anyone tell me that, oh, I'm trying to really study up for hippo players or I'm really trying to figure out what to do with the Czech Peerts right now. And because of that, they might not even know what it is when you play the Czech Peerts. And you might have already played 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 games with it. You may have you know, watched the videos, read books, looked at Grandmaster games, plugged stuff into the engine. You're going to have a huge advantage in terms of the middle game and understanding what the positions bring about. Okay. Now today's game, we go over one by, uh, you know, the former world champion, Tigran Protosian. Uh, now when this game was played in 57, uh, he was not yet world champ, but this is a very strong game. Uh, and at this point in time, he had achieved the grandmaster title. So, you know, his opponent here starts off with D4. Now, some of you, and I understand might be going, wait, what in the world? And I said the same thing. Okay. When I'm on chessgames.com looking up grandmaster games and you know, this is one of the Czech Pierce defense games. I'm thinking what in the I mean, D4, right? We can't play the Peerts against D4. We actually can in a way. Okay. Now we could play this move of D6. Now this might not technically be a Peerts yet, but if white plays E4, guess what? You're in a Peerts and your opponent probably doesn't know what to do with it because they're a D4 player. Okay. And by the way, if they play a move like C4, you could go with the English rat defense with E5 and, um, yeah, I'll, I'll leave a link to that video that I made a while back uh, down in the description below. It's a it's a fun one. OK, but a lot to say in the game here, we have knight f6, the Indian game. This can lead to so much different stuff. The king's Indian defense, um, the Banco Gambit, Bogo Indian, Nimzo Indian. There's so much so many things that can come out of this move. But we see knight f3, d6, knight c3, bishop g4. White just goes, you know what, whatever. I'll take the center and now c6. Now we're in a check pierce. How do we usually get to the check pierce? Not this way. Okay, usually it's with this move of e4, in which case we play d6, knight f6. And instead of playing the mainline pierce with g6, we go with c6, looking to kind of neutralize that knight, looking to prepare either d5 or b5, depending on what white plays here, what setup they go with, and finally looking to activate our queen to one of the following squares, okay? Now, if I move like knight f3, most grandmaster players go with bishop g4, and that's the position that we saw in the game, okay? The only difference is that when we played bishop g4 by Petrosium, white played e4, then we saw the move of c6. As you'll see, both of these positions are similar, You uh, and really the same, actually. You might see a little bit of a difference with what's highlighted, but that's just because of the move order difference, okay? But we reached this position. We're in a check pierce now. What's next? Okay. In the game, white plays h3. Now, most uh, master, you know, GM players go with bishop h5. Okay. And I'm, you know, let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Do you like bishop h5 or would you rather just snatch off that knight? Okay. Which one would you rather do? This performs better, but I understand if someone doesn't like it. Because when we do play bishop h5, white can play a move like g4 and really play aggressively. I mean, you know, a move like bishop d3. Here, black can play e6. If you look at online chess, uh, the most popular move uh, for white is bishop g5. Uh, in terms of all levels of play, bishop g5 is played quite a bit. Bishop e7. White has a lot of space, but it turns out that black's completely fine here. Okay, I mean, this is a this is a sound position, and uh, and black's playing well. Now, oftentimes white will play queen d2, in which case we can play d5. We've really prepped this move well with our pawns, and our bishop is not on c8. Okay, our bishop's on g6, which is a much better square. If we move like e5, we can drop our knight back. You know, white will often take and castle queen side. My recommendation for you here would be to snatch off that bishop 
And then you could play a move like C5. C5 is sound. I personally, as a hippo player, I'm big on, you know, kind of a slow burn approach, slowly building up an attack, slowly improving the position um, until you got something really going. So I would probably play the move A6 myself and then C5, right? Just, just so that knight B5 and queen B5 can't even be thought about when I play the move C5. But okay, now C5, knight C6. You know, a rook on C8 could be great. Uh, these pawns could keep pushing down the board. I mean, we're going to have some fun attacking chess here, okay, against white center and against their king. But again, after H3, Petrosian here goes with the move of bishop takes F3. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not too sure how familiar Petrosian was with the theory of the check peers. Um, and it was also 1957. So, yeah, I mean, a lot has changed in the chess world since then in terms of opening theory, obviously. But... Um, he plays this move of knight bd7. I, I think that's a mistake. Okay, the reason for that is because now this knight has nowhere to go if it gets kicked. Okay. What I recommend here is e6 followed by d5. Okay. And and if white plays e5, guess what? We have an escape square. Okay, this is a common theme theme if you're a Pierce, Chuck Pierce, Hippo, modern defense player. Um, I'm sure there's more, more opening as I can name off too, but now this knight has an escape square. Now we're gonna go one, two. And our knights are centralized and they're putting pressure on white's extended central pawns. This is great. Okay. But in the game after knight bd7, notice now when we play e6 and d5 and white pushes, our knight can't go here. Okay. Instead of going one, two, three, if we want to get that same setup, we'd have to go one, two, three, four, and we already did this. So five. Okay. It's a lot slower. Knight g8 here. I just, I don't like it for black personally. Okay. But this is still okay for black. I mean, B5, Bishop D3, Knight B6 is played. You know, this position kind of, it trips me out a little bit, right? Because when we, when we think about development, we only count the pieces, right? And by pieces, we mean minor and major pieces. We don't count the pawns. You can't just push a bunch of pawns and then go, I'm ahead and develop. That's not how it works, right? So we have one piece developed. White has six pieces developed. But white's not even plus one here, right? Not even plus 0.7, okay, when I'm looking at the engine right now. And, um, you know, I think the reason for that at the end of the day is because this is a closed position, okay? Now, of course, the evaluation's going up a little bit, down a little bit, you know, 0 0.8, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, whatever. But overall, it's like white's not winning this. They have an advantage, but they're not winning, okay? And I think the reason for that is because it's closed, Okay. When you're down in development, you want to keep the peace. You want to keep things locked up. You want to just, you know, if your opponent has a bunch of development on you, you kind of just, let's just keep the peace, keep things closed down, keep, keep our King safe. If we're up in development, if we've developed eight pieces, I almost said nine, eight or nine, but if you, yeah, there's only eight when you start, unless you promote to another queen or something, but okay. Eight P let's say you got eight pieces developed, all your pieces out. Your opponent has moved one night. You want the game to be open, right? If I'm white here, I want these pawns to be off the board because then all of these open, you know, files, diagonals against the enemy king are going to be open. Black's losing there. But because of these pawns here, white has development, but it's hard to pull through and convert that into a winning position. Hey, y'all, I really quickly wanted to give a shout out to my friend Gwen, who owns Cosine Creative. Every single video, every single thumbnail that you see on this channel from the very start of it has been edited and designed by Cosine Creative. This also includes my entire website, our new merch line collaboration, uh, as well as my media marketing. All of this has been uh, you know, done by Coastline Creative. And if you're thinking about starting a YouTube channel, maybe you already have a YouTube channel, but you're trying to take that to the next level or you run a small business and you're trying to you know, make your marketing stand out to bigger competitors, Coastline Creative is the place to go to make your ideas real. If you're interested in working with Coastline Creative, all you gotta do, go down to the link in the description below, contact Gwen there. And uh, yeah, I promise you that Coastline Creative does amazing professional work in a timely manner and um, really just does things, you know, at a, at a high quality level. So all I'd say, can't say enough about Coastline Creative. Let's continue with the video. Okay, King B1 is played. Whole idea being, you know, getting that king off of that diagonal. Was black threatening anything? No, but now for the rest of the game, uh, you know, this king will not have to worry about getting checked. This is what we call a prophylactic move. It's also tucking the king a little bit, you know, a little bit more in the corner, just so it's a little bit more safe. And now we have knight c4. 
from Petrosian. Okay, he's going, you know what? I have other pieces. I don't really care right now. I'm trying to activate this knight as much as I possibly can. And notice, if white takes this knight, I mean, this B file is, is going to be a monstrous uh, file for us to really activate our pieces against the enemy king. White does not want to deal with that. A rook and a queen going for B2 with potentially dark squared bishop getting in the mix as well. Okay, so white here instead plays the move of bishop C1, just defending these types of squares, right? Just, you know, giving white a defensive presence. Queen B6 is played. And yeah, I mean, I'm in the game, uh, the move of G5 is played from a practical standpoint. I don't really like that for white. Uh, I think, you know, I would probably, if I was white, opt for a move like queen G3 and then try to push this pawn to F5 as fast as I possibly could. But instead, right, we have that move of G5. Black here plays knight E7, developing, and C5, okay? When we look at both sides of the board, black wants the queen side right the side that the queen starts on to be open right this is this is all very common basic principle chess but it can go a long way if you really uh, utilize it in your own games okay we want this side to be open because that's where their king is we want to keep this side closed if someone only sees this side of the board we want them to think gosh this game is boring right but as black we want this side to open up so that's why we play c5 right he's not playing h6 here or f6 because that would make our king more vulnerable okay so c5 here um d takes c5 is played now queen captures is is what followed through here just a quick uh thing knight takes e5 does not work here okay it might look like a good move oh they get my queen i get theirs by the way even then white's better but white here could play a move like queen g3 now our knights hanging our queen is under attack and this pawn is under attack this is not good if we play a move like queen c7 white gets another tempo against our queen if we drop back to the eighth rank bishop f4 battery ram against our minor piece if we try to defend it now we have an absolute pin and a relative pin um so much going on here i'm just going to stop it here i mean this is just this is just getting bad okay so that obviously does not work uh, for a number of reasons including queen g3 and all of our pieces are hanging at once so instead we have queen takes c5 okay rook h e1 is played now when we're playing chess, there's also this concept of time, right? How much time do we have, right? And I've had games before where, and, I, and I've went over them on this channel, one of them in particular comes to mind where I, I had all the time in the world. If my opponent had 10 moves in a row, right? Obviously I'm not counting if they just take a bunch of pieces in a row acting as if I can't move, but in terms of actual planning, even if they had 10 moves, their pieces were kind of just stuck. They couldn't really do anything, right? I've had games where my opponent or myself is moving the rook back and forth because there's literally nothing we can do. That means your opponent has time to slowly improve the position, right? They don't have to be in a rush. In this position, black's in a rush, okay? For example, let's just say black plays rook here and rook back. Is that a good idea? No, okay? But here's why we don't have time to do that. G6 is the idea. White here blasting open our king side. If we take, they take again. They're still threatening. Queen takes f7. Um, if we take with the knight, I mean, you know, uh, in that case, I mean, let's just look at it, right? I mean, if knight takes, bishop takes, um, white can just keep blasting this game open. Knight takes d5, rook takes. Are we up in material? Yes. But our king is in huge danger. A move like e6, we cannot castle queen side or king side because both of those files are tapered off. The queen is eyeing this rook. A pawn on e6. I mean, this pawn is just brutal um, on our side of the board. This is just not good. Okay, this is not good. This is over plus four for white. So, and going back, I mean, if we if we play a move like f takes instead, we still got a ton of weaknesses that we got to worry about here. This is just this is not good. Okay, so what do we do in a position like this? We have to play a little bit of defensive chess. Uh, b4 is a move that's played here. We have the move of g6. A very sound move here from Petrosian. The whole idea being that if a move like h5, we're just gonna, we're not gonna take, we're just gonna leave our pawn here, right? And I think that's part of the reason I didn't like g5 so much because this pawn was already on e5 and it just feels like white has really bunkered down on the dark square so much that by us doing this light squared pawn configuration, we're kind of okay, right? We have a double pawn clamp there, two pawns defending that square. Sure, you can bring your queen in, but we just move our rook over and we're okay. So. 
The game continues here with b3. We now have bishop g7. Okay. Again, I want to say that we got to be careful, right? Especially with our king in the center. Knight takes e5. Giving up a piece for a pawn and then getting a piece. It might seem like we just want a pawn, but then bishop takes b5 and our queen falls. So instead we see this move of bishop g7, Fianchetto wing. This is not just defensive in the sense that it's defending these dark scores, but it's also a very active bishop aimed towards uh, white's castle king. Okay. Here white ends up taking the knight. Now, which file do we want open? The D or B? We want the B file open because that's directly against the open king. Bishop F1 is played here. We now have castling kingside. Here, Petrosian felt like he had time, and it, it's true. I mean, you know, if white here plays a move like H5, there's just, there's going to be too much coming too soon here against this king. White has, you know, really hunkered down in the center so much that now we castle kingside, and our king actually feels pretty safe, right? King A1 is played, just kind of getting off of that file before we check. We're still coming there anyways. Knight B1 is played, coming back. Knight C6. I, I, I like this move a lot, right? Like the queen's very active. The bishop's in a great spot. Um, is this knight the best attacking piece right now? No. All right, let's get it in there. Now we're, you know, we're double attacking that pawn. White ends up defending it with queen to G3. Queen C3 is, is a much better move for white. Uh, because it, the, you know the queen's closer to the king and uh, just gives the king a better defensive presence. But after queen g3, we have the beautiful rook takes b1. I mean, this is just great, great chess here. Rook b8 with check again. Um, you know, I mean, if the queen blocks, thanks for the queen. If the bishop blocks, we have c3 crushing position here with rook takes b2 on the way. So here white plays king a1 and now we have c3. Okay. By the way, if white played queen c3 instead of queen g3, right, that, that's kind of when these, these ideas come into play, right? Like, for example, queen c3, okay? Let's just say we take here and then play this, right? We can't play c3 anymore because the queen's there and it's defending this pawn. And if we push, we drop c4, okay? So all that to say, queen g3 was a mistake. We end up taking throwing in a check and then here playing c3 cutting the queen off and ultimately we're looking at a move like queen b4 okay let's just say white you know makes some kind of move here like h5 they're way behind in the attack but let's just say they try to attack us queen b4 guess what we're threatening mate bishop a3 surviving guess what we're threatening mate rook b1 guess what we're threatening mate again two different ways bishop c4 oh we're threatening mate again rook to oh we have mate Okay, so white's not going to survive that. So instead, we see this move of bishop d2, trying to get this rook over there, right? Um, but now the beautiful move, knight b4, threatening a mate in one. White defends it. And the finishing move, this move here, against this move, white resigns the game. Disgusting tactic, queen c4. Whew, beautiful move. I mean, white resigns. White resigns, right? If you take the queen... Checkmate. That's it. Okay. If uh, if you don't take the queen, I mean, you're about to get mated. So if you don't take the queen, you know, maybe you play king b1 to try to survive, but you're still going to get mated. So yeah, I mean, after this move, you're going to get mated. Or if you take the queen, you're going to get mated. So here, white resigns. But beautiful game overall uh, by Petrosian. And I also just want to mention on, on the chess opening theory side of things, right? Um, just be careful if you're preparing to play e6 and d5 in the check pierce, which is a very common idea, by the way. Um, you know, some players go with this, some players go with an e5 push at some point. Um, but if you're going to play e6 and d5, you got to make sure that this knight has somewhere to run. Okay. Knight bd7 there was a big mistake. Instead, you should play e6 and d5 right away. Now you have an escape square. Now you're going to play a move like c5, knight c6, put a ton of pressure on this pawn. And I mean, look, let's say, you know, we play c5. If white ever captures this pawn, this pawn just got weaker. It doesn't have a defender anymore. Okay. So that's kind of one of the main ideas there. Um, there's a lot of good moves here. Taking, taking, even knight c6 is extremely sound. Double attacking this pawn, uh, double attacking this pawn. White just can't hold on to everything here. And um, yeah, a good position for black. We have reached uh, practical equality, um, near equality. And honestly, I mean, you know, even though 
We only have two pieces developed. Uh, white center is falling apart. That said, though, we got to really prioritize king safety. Okay, we got to be aware that when we're down in material moves, even if the position's closed, we got to be careful to not let things open up in the wrong way. Hope you enjoyed this one. And um, yeah, let me know down in the comment section below if you have any questions or thoughts on the Chuck Pierce. Hey, thanks for watching today's video. I hope that you enjoyed it. And I wanted to give a big shout out to my Patreon community for the month of May in 2024. I appreciate y'all a ton. And uh, yeah, I mean, if you haven't thought about becoming a Patreon supporter uh, for this channel before, I highly recommend that you go and check out some of the benefits that you gain by becoming a member. And I will see y'all in the next one. Peace.